My name is Louis Aldawi, and I'm a consultant hematologist at Kettering Hospital in the UK. Today we'll talk about plasma transfusion. The topics we will review are fresh frozen plasma, the component or products. Some countries would like to refer to fresh frozen plasma as products rather than components. The coagulation testing, we will review the efficacy of the currently available coagulation tests, INR and PT and whether they are good at expecting risk of bleeding. We will discuss the effectiveness of fresh frozen plasma and limitations of fresh frozen plasma, as well as competing strategies, mainly vitamin K, protrompine complex concentrate, recombinant factor seven, etc. Fresh frozen plasma is usually derived from whole blood Sometimes it can be derived from apheresis. In the UK, it's about 50-50. Both are therapeutically equivalent in terms of hemostasis and side effect profile. They are frozen within eight hours of collection. The volume of each unit varies between 180 and 400 mils. And the content, they have normal levels of all coagulation factors. ABO compound compatibility is required, however, cross-matching is not required. What are the different plasma products we have? 24-hour plasma, which is the same as fresh frozen plasma, but it's only frozen between 8 and 48 and 24 hours after collection. Sometimes when we have high demand for plasma, we go for rural areas and we get plasma, we don't have enough time to freeze them within 8 hours, so they will be frozen between 8 and to 24 hours. They have all factors at normal levels except factor 8, which declines to 60% normal. 5-day plasma is a plasma which has been thawed, but not used for some reason. This can be refrigerated for 5 days and then used. Liquid plasma is a plasma that is typically derived from apheresis, hasn't been freezed, it was refrigerated so it can be used 26 to 40 days after collection. Cryobur or reduced plasma is a plasma supernatant after cryoprecipitate is removed. This is mainly used for TTP patients. Jumpo plasma is typically derived from apheresis where you can really derive large amounts of plasma can be 500 to 800 mils. A newer fresh frozen plasma is a pathogen inactivated frozen plasma, which is typically used in TTP patients as they need frequent plasma transfusion daily and for two days after remission. Therefore, it's better to give them pathogen inactivated plasma. Recombinant plasma that Japanese scientists are working very hard on getting the recombinant plasma. Now we are going to talk about coagulation testing and conventional approach. General practitioner will assume that all fresh frozen plasma units contain sufficient products and abnormalities of the PT or INR correlate with the risk of bleeding from a procedure. Plasma transfusion can correct the abnormal PT or INR and reduce or eliminate the risk of bleeding. These are all assumptions. We will try to challenge some of these assumptions. In this study, to the left, you can get the percentage of clotting factors and to the right, corresponding INR. You can see that you need at least 30% clotting factors in order to clot. That corresponds with an INR of 1.7. And therefore, if somebody calls me and sending somebody for a procedure with an INR of 1.6, I wouldn't really issue a plasma because he will have enough clotting factors to make a clot during the surgery. In the past, we used to think about hemostasis as somebody who was bleeding to death and we need to stop the bleeding. However, nowadays we think about it as a balance between thrombosis and bleeding. And an example of that would be liver disease, especially in severe liver disease where you have loss of procoagulants, factor 2, factor 7, factor 9, and factor 10, which would make the INR high. At the same time, we have loss of the anticoagulants, protein C and protein S, will put the patient at balance and 
therefore we don't need to correct the loss of broca adjuvants what happens is that we only measure the INR and decide based on the high INR, but we don't measure protein C and protein S in liver disease. Therefore, in liver disease, unless the patient is bleeding, we wouldn't give him FFP. Effectiveness of fresh frozen plasma. How good is the evidence base for fresh frozen, frozen plasma use? There is no systematic review specific to the safety and effectiveness of fresh frozen plasma. Most studies on clinical uses of fresh frozen plasma are either not randomized control trials or enrolled a small number of patients, no evidence for prophylactic use of FFP, and no adequate risk and benefit analysis. Transfusion rates of fresh frozen plasma. You can see from this slide that different countries have been trying to reduce the use of fresh frozen plasma. France and Denmark have been very successful. UK in the middle. Use of fresh frozen plasma and reversal of warfarin. In this study, about 12 patients treated with four units of fresh frozen plasma for elevated INR or PT. You can see that pre-transfusion, the INR was 8.95, and post-transfusion, the INR has come back to 2. Even with 4 units, you could not normalize the INR. Factor 2, pre-transfusion was 0.03, and post-transfusion, 0.17. You can see for other cutting factors that even with 4 units of FFP, you couldn't bring the cutting factors to where it should be at 30% at least why do physicians request fresh frozen plasma in this study we found out that one third of plasma requested was to prepare a patient with an elevated INR for a procedure what are the main reasons for giving FFP in adults bleeding of course however 44 percent of plasma was given to non-bleeding patients and that's where we think the inappropriate use of plasma come from. Where was the patient when FFP was administered? Operating rooms, 23%. Medical ward, 22%. ITU or HTU, 33%. In this study, the conclusions say clearly that critically ill patients frequently receive inappropriate fresh frozen plasma. Now, how about using fresh frozen plasma in advanced liver disease? In this study, they studied 100 patients with advanced liver disease. And those who had less than two units of fresh frozen plasma were only five. And the number of patients with correction in PT was zero. Those who had two to five units of fresh frozen plasma, they were 75 patients. And the percentage of correction was 10.7. Those who had more than six units of plasma, they were 20 and you'd get only 20% correction. So even with very high volume, you wouldn't get maximum correction of INR. In this hospital, Rhode Island Hospital, they tried to reduce the use of fresh frozen plasma by first doing an education, like what we are doing now. You get valuable results, and then early enforcement, which means the plasma was issued for somebody going for surgery with an INR of 1.6, they would review the case and they would contact the clinician and tell him that it was not appropriate to use plasma at this INR level. And then the only time they could see reduction in plasma use was with active enforcement, where a transfusion specialist will go and see the patient and review the lab results. And if he thinks the plasma is appropriate, he will release it. And if not, he will not release it. What are the limitations of fresh frozen plasma? Advantages of plasma. They are widely available. They contain all coagulation factors required for hemostasis, as well as fibrinogen and other plasma proteins. They have less risk of thromboembolism. Where, what are the disadvantages of fresh frozen plasma, the need for compatibility testing, the need for thawing, they have variable content of vitamin K dependent K 
clotting factors. They have rare complications such as trolley or bloodborne infections. Of course, volume challenge and fluid overload. What are the predicted fresh frozen plasma volume, dose, and expected factor increment for various target INR values? In this study, based on a 70 kilogram adult patient, if you have an INR at 6 and you want to bring it down to 1.3, you need to use 4.5 liters. To bring it down to 1.5, you need 3.5 liters. To 1.7, you need 2.5 liters. I give you other INR levels with different target INRs. This will give you an example how much plasma you need to use in order to normalize the INR. How about options for fibrinogen replacement in clinical practice? This is mainly important for postpartum hemorrhage and patients with trauma. They need lots of fibrinogen. You can see if you need to bring fibrinogen up from 0.5 to 1.5, you need 2 to 2.5 liters of plasma. If you use cryoprecipitate, you need only 260 mils. If you use fibrinogen, concentrate it's only 100 mils finally we will talk about the competing strategies like vitamin k and we have cryoprecipitate protrombin complex concentrate and recombinant factor 7a vitamin k therapy alone is inappropriate if rapid normalization is required obviously that means in a bleeding patient, you can't use vitamin K only. You should use either fresh frozen plasma or protrombin complex concentrate based on the clinical scenario. Oral formulations may be considered for non-emergency treatment of anticoagulant associated coagulopathy. You need to realize that the onset of action is at least 24 hours of, for oral route. Guidelines recommend IV infusion for emergent reversal of warfarin associated coagulopathy. The onset of action is four to six hours for IV route. There is a small risk of anaphylaxis, but if you really review all the cases, it was because the clinician was administering or infusing the vitamin K rapidly. What are the current indications for the use of FFP? TTP single volume daily plasma exchange should ideally be begun at presentation and preferably within 24 hours of presentation daily plasma exchange should continue for a minimum of two days after remission is obtained reversal of warfarin effect ffp should never be used for the reversal of warfarin anticoagulation when there is no evidence of severe bleeding Liver disease available evidence suggests that patients with liver disease and the PT more than four seconds longer than control are unlikely to benefit from FFP and thank you for your attention.